let us demand that educators around America teach evolution not as fact, but as theory. That's Mike Pence, the current vice president of the United States, explaining evolution. But he wasn't always like that. Michael Richard Pence was born in 1959 to a family of Catholic Democrats in Indiana. Pence himself was a Democrat for much of his youth. He idolized JFK and voted for Jimmy Carter over Ronald Reagan because why would you elect a movie star, he said. At Hanover College, Pence started hanging out with a different crowd. He was drawn to one of his older fraternity brothers, John Gable, when he noticed a gold shiny cross hanging from Gable's neck. But it was the power of music that truly changed Pence. As he explained in a 2010 interview, standing at a Christian music festival in Asbury, Kentucky in the spring of 1978, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and that's changed everything. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. After a brief law career, Pence ran for Congress in Indiana against Democratic incumbent Phil Sharp. It was revealed that Pence set up his campaign as a for-profit corporation, keeping some of the money for himself. He lost. Two years later, he ran against Sharp again. Pence's campaign set up a phony environmental advocacy group to call voters and tell them Sharp was planning on turning the family farm into a nuclear waste dump. Pence's campaign was caught. He lost with 42% of the vote and swore off campaigning for a career in radio. This is Mike Pence. The Mike Pence Show and other shows hosted by Pence aired locally for a decade. Thanks to all of you listening. As a media personality, Pence also embraced the written word, penning notable op-eds about how Mulan is bad and cigarettes are awesome. Despite the hysteria from the political class and the media, smoking doesn't kill, he said. It was around that time that Pence would get back into his political career. In 2000, he ran for Congress. Our campaign this year has committed itself to talking about Mike Pence and what Mike Pence believes. I'm Mike Pence, and I ask for your support to serve Indiana in Congress. His campaign website flaunted a promise to give money to institutions which provide assistance to those seeking to change their sexual behavior, a promise many read as a commitment to gay conversion therapy. Pence spokespeople denied that claim. Pence's promise didn't gain much steam, but he still used his seat in Congress to further his extreme beliefs. His efforts focus on limiting women's access to health care, blockading America's access to stem cell research, cutting Hurricane Katrina relief funds, and changing the definition of rape twice. I want to urge my colleagues to stand with all of us, to stand for life, to stand for taxpayers. Let's end public funding of the largest abortion provider in America. In 2012, he went on to run for governor of Indiana. During his campaign, he once again reportedly used campaign funds for personal needs. He also accepted more than $200,000 from the Koch brothers. He won. During his governorship, he implemented a law allowing discrimination against the LGBT community in the name of religion. The law most notably came to a head when a pizzeria used it as justification to not cater gay weddings. Do you think it should be legal in the state of Indiana to discriminate against gays or lesbians? George, it's a yes or no question. Your, uh, come on, Hoosiers don't believe in discrimination. And this is about protecting the religious liberty of every Hoosier, of every faith. And, and we're going to continue to work our hearts out uh, to clarify that to the people of Indiana and the people of this great country. Yes or no, should it be legal to discriminate against gays and lesbians? It's worth noting that Pence's own relationship is a little unconventional. A Rolling Stone reporter observed that Governor Pence referred to his wife, Karen, as mother. Pence also admits that he refuses to dine alone with women without his wife there, which thereby limits the power of women who work with him. But Pence's policies affected more than just gay wedding pizza. Some argue that he worsened the effects of an HIV outbreak. HIV rates were on the rise in a small rural county in Indiana, linked to the sharing of drug needles. Governor Pence was made aware of the problem by the Centers for Disease Control, but didn't act on it. Multiple people reported that he told them he had to wait and prey on it. Pence eventually allowed a needle exchange program, but only after infections had skyrocketed. I do not support needle exchange as anti-drug policy, but this is a public health emergency. And on the recommendation of the Centers for Disease Control, I am authorizing a focused, short-term, limited needle exchange program if local officials deem that to be necessary and appropriate. In the end, more than 200 people were infected. Months later, Pence would be tapped as Donald Trump's vice president. 
Penn stayed mostly uninvolved with the scandal surrounding the campaign, smiling and nodding through accusations of treason, sexual abuse and corruption levied at Trump and team. I think this is a good man who's been talking about the issues. And that's all he has to do to remain one heartbeat away from the presidency. People in America is back.